Okay, so I, I decided to uh, focus on scotomas, uh, specifically because I think it's interesting that a lot of our um, perceptual experience uh, is not grounded in reality, but rather that the brain is capable of kind of filling in information that we don't have. Um, so to begin talking about scotomas, it's important probably to uh, begin with the visual system. Um, and so I'm not going to go into too much detail because we're all familiar with how the visual system works. But I think it's important to highlight that this kind of classic um, description of the, uh, the visual system is not entirely accurate. And specifically that um, information doesn't travel in this, uh, unidirectionally, like through the visual um, processes. Um, so like in, in a traditional diagram, you would have light hitting the back of the eyes, um, the, the retinas where there are clusters of photoreceptors. Um, and that uh, kind of cluster of axons, um, which later becomes um, the optic tract, the tract um, travels to a part of the thalamus, um, the LGN, uh, and then that optic radiation goes to the occipital lobe, where it is later um, processed along different pathways. Uh, and the important thing to highlight here is that um, the information is not only traveling in this one direction, and uh, in the book, Ramachandran would kind of describe the way that visual processing happens more uh, closely to like a, uh, a mirror funhouse, right, where their um, information is traveling in a variety of directions and going back and forth rather than uh, functioning as a simple circuit. Um, and so onto scotomas. Um, scotomas are blind spots uh, in the eyes. So already uh, in every person's eyes there already exists a blind spot. Um, which is directly above the optic nerve. So this blind spot exists because there are no uh, photoreceptors above this uh, cluster of axons. Um, but even though this is true for every person, um, we don't uh, perceive uh, these blind spots. We don't, we don't notice them in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and that's partly due because of the nature of binocular vision. Um, we have two eyes, and so we're able to kind of fill in these areas that we don't actually see. But even if I were to close one of my eyes, um, it's unlikely that I would notice my blind spot um, because of a process called perceptual filling in. Um, so if I were to close my right eye and focus my left eye intently on a small spot um, in the pattern, my blind spot would um, line up directly above this box. Um, and even though that's true, um, because of the consistency of the pattern and the rest of the image, my brain would automatically fill in um, the box with the rest of the pattern. Um, so to me, it would just look like a, a solid square of these kind of dashed lines. Um, and so I decided to kind of investigate scotomas further, um, and uh, I found this research um, on artificially produced scotomas. Um, and so in the experiment, uh, lesions were made to macaque eyes using basically a laser, um, and more specifically a laser photocoagulator. Um, which damages, of course, um, the photoreceptors in the retina, um, terminating kind of any possibility of actual um, light information traveling along the optic tracks to the occipital lobe uh, and, and to V1. So the experiment was kind of designed to test um, whether or not uh, cortical remapping was necessary for perceptual filling in. Um, and the results essentially um, were that uh, they can measure that no cortical remapping occurred and yet perceptual filling in still happened for these macaque monkeys. Um, so we can kind of interpret these results um, as kind of indicating that the perceptual filling in is more a result um, of later interpretation of, um, of information, of, of data, um, and then it is about uh, the termination points of these photoreceptors, which I found interesting.